In this video, we are going to be talking about the software updates announced at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. So let's get to it. Starting off with iOS 17 and the updates are minor and mostly polishing what they have already done before. Starting with now you can share a contact or your contact information with someone. When you bring the phones close together you see like a ripple effect on both devices so it's kind of gimmicky but that's what they decided to do. They're, again it's mostly minor updates. When you really think about it they're not that interesting but Let's keep going. Next in the Messages app, uh, for the feature that came out in iOS 16, which was the, uh, the one that you could remove a subject from the picture, from the background, like a person or an automobile or, or a pet, you could remove them from the actual picture. Now you can do that in iMessage and create a sticker just like you can do in WhatsApp. So it now makes it easier for you to create stickers for uh, iMessage. One of the other features that they also announced for those of you who like using FaceTime, a lot of people apparently were indicating that they like FaceTime, but they didn't like that after nobody answered, they didn't have an option to leave a message. They had to go into their messages app and leave a message saying, call me when you get a chance or whatever it is that uh, they wanted to say. Now you will be able to leave a video message. Instead of a voice message, you will be able to leave a video message and they will be receiving that and they can see that and they can either call you back or whatever it is that they are going to do afterwards. But you will have uh, the option to leave a video message. Additionally, now that we're talking about FaceTime, one of the other features that they announced is that you will be able to FaceTime or and by using continuity camera with your Apple TV you will be able to uh, display the images of those people who you are FaceTiming with on your Apple TV and your TV set, and you will be able to continue the conversation using the iPhone's camera. This is great for families that want to do this, that uh, like to video conference a lot, families. Now you have the option to be able to do it and have it on a big screen like uh, your TV uh, would be. So you have that alternative now. Finally, uh, you will be able to interact with widgets. Uh, a lot of people love the fact that you can place widgets now on any screen that you have, but they didn't like that when you actually wanted to do something on that widget, it automatically jumped to the app. Now you will be able to request whatever action you're going to take directly on the widget. I'm going to use the example of the music app. If you select play pause you can do it directly on the widget instead before when you tapped on the widget it went directly to the music app so you could take whatever action it was that you wanted to take uh, the only other feature that I actually that that one I thought it was kind of good I don't really use widgets but that one I thought was kind of good the only other one that I actually like ironically is one that you are actually not going to touch your phone for which is the one for the display stand now when you go to sleep and you place your phone horizontally on a charging station, uh, it will change to display the time uh, nice and large numbers and you will also be able to add some additional information. I like that but I find it ironic that you will not be touching your phone for what I thought was the best feature uh, that they announced for iOS 17 and additionally that most of the charging uh, stations that this will work for are not Apple made because the charging pod for MagSafe is it lays flat on your desk so you can use that you would have to use one where it's kind of floating or it purposely puts uh, your phone facing forward so anyways I just thought it was kind of funny that they actually their best feature is something that you are not touching your phone with and it doesn't help them sell uh, chargers so I just thought that was a little funny. iOS 17 will be available for all devices that you can see on your screen right now and it should be announced that it will be released 
when the iPhone 15 gets released. Uh, it is very important on that list to indicate that it is finally the end of software updates for the iPhone 10. So the first phone that Apple removed the home button for has finally stopped receiving updates. So that is, uh, that is very impressive and that is one of the reasons why a lot of people love Apple because you get a lot of years of software updates. We're on the iPhone 15, that was the iPhone 10. So uh, five years, that's, that's, that's very nice. Or, or no, six years. Because that bet between the iPhone, I don't think there was, yeah, there was an iPhone 11. Uh, between the iPhone 10 and 11, there was an iPhone 10s. So six years of software updates, that's, that's very nice, Apple. I gotta give them, I gotta give it to him, I'm sorry. Next, we're gonna be talking about the iPad OS updates. It brings a lot of the features that I mentioned in iOS 17, but the best feature that it will bring is that the health app will be available for iPad OS. Yay! I actually don't even use the health app on my iPhone or I barely use it. I use it a little bit more now for my medication reminders, but I didn't use it a lot. I'm not an exercise kind of person. Those who know me know. I'm not an exercise kind of person. Anyways, also lock screen adjustments, like on the iPhone, uh, you guys push in on the wallpaper, it goes down and you can uh, add widgets and stuff like that. You will now be able to do that finally with the iPad. It's like they leave features that they could add on the same year for both devices. They leave them and they delay them one more year for the iPad. And my opinion is that this is what happens when you have no idea what you are doing with the device. Apple is doing this purposely because they have no idea what to do with the iPad. But I'm not going to get into that a lot. I already made a video complaining enough about uh, how much Apple doesn't know what to do. I made a couple because I also remember ranting a lot on the uh, Final Cut Pro for iPad. Anyways, these are the devices that will be available, uh, that I iPad OS 17 will be available for and it should also be releasing it this fall. Now moving on to Mac OS, the new version will be called Sonoma and will have interactive widgets. Just like in the iPhone this year, it will also have interactive widgets and also you will be able to access iPhone widgets on your Mac. So that is obviously something that a lot of people will like. Those who use widgets a lot will obviously like that. Private browsing mode, a gaming mode for Apple Silicon Macs only, sorry Intel, Fin they're starting to remove features for you, but that's just the way it goes. You're eventually going to go the way of the Dodo, so I'm sorry, uh, but that's eventually the way it's going to be. More and more features are going to come out and they're going to start saying this is not available for Intel, that's not available for Intel, but that's just the way it goes. And finally, screen savers like on Apple TV. Uh, for those of you who don't have Apple TV, uh, they have some very nice wallpapers, I, uh, screensavers, sorry, I gotta admit, uh, they, they're looking very nice. Some of them have shots from the International Space Station going around different parts of the Earth. Some go underwater, Another ones are like uh, uh, views from different cities. Uh, it, it, overall, it's really very nice. So it's something that at least sometimes I just let uh, the Apple TV go to screensaver mode so I can just watch whatever it is that it's going to display. Obviously this will be available for these Macs that you see on the screen and they will release it this fall. Finally, I just think that Apple thought, my, this is my final opinion regarding uh, the software that was announced, I just think that Apple thought that they could get away with it uh, with minimalist updates. And I know that a lot of companies are going with that minimalist update so they can leave something for the following year uh, with the operating systems. But Apple is really going far this, specifically this year because they showed so many new products that everybody, they thought everybody was gonna see, oh, look at the shiny new thing. And they were not gonna pay attention to the software updates. Uh, the software updates were bad for me to say the least. Uh, I was really disappointed in what I saw. Anyways. Let me know your opinion in the comments down below. The, did you like the updates? Did you not like them? I know there's something that are, that's are, that are good, but overall, do you think it was a crappy update or you think it, they could have done a lot more to update the operating system? While you're down there, smash that like button, subscribe, 
and hit that bell so you can no notified when we have new videos. As I always say, if you have a Google or Gmail account, you have a YouTube account. Sign in on your app or your favorite browser, youtube.com. Look for us at J.R. Abrams Tech so you can go ahead and subscribe. And the only way to leave the like, not just for me, for, but for any other YouTuber that you like and support them and help them grow, is with that like. So the only way you can do that is by signing in with your Google account. As always, we're available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and obviously YouTube at J.R. Abrams Tech so you can stay up to date with the latest news or rumors about tech. Until next time.